In this video, we're going to take a look at predicate logic, and then in the following video, we'll talk about quantifiers and sort of put everything together, but this will be a great introduction to predicate logic. So we've been working very hard at understanding propositions. We know all the connectives. However, if I were to say all candy made with chocolate is delicious, M&Ms are made with chocolate, does it follow that M&Ms are delicious? Now you might say yes, you might say we don't have enough information, but the point is I can't model this relationship with propositions that I already know. So this is where we need predicate logic. So predicate logic has three parts, a minimum of two. So in this video, we're going to look at the variables and the predicates. And then in the next video, we'll take a look at quantifiers, which you may or may not have. So here's what a predicate is all about. If we have a statement like x is less than two, or x plus y equals z, obviously these are things that we see in mathematics all of the time and in computer programming. These statements aren't true and they're not false unless I were to give you a value. So if I said x is five and then x is less than two, now all of a sudden I have a truth value because five is not less than two, so that would be false. So the statement x is less than two has two parts. The variable, obviously, is x. So x is the variable and it could be any variable just like in normal algebra. Um, and that's obviously the subject of the statement. The second part is called the predicate, which is what we're learning about. The predicate is less than two, gives us some sort of property that the variable is subject to. So we have the predicate, which we denote with P, and the variable, which we denote with X. And notice the way that we're going to write this. This should look very familiar to you. This looks like a function. That's correct. This is a propositional function. So a propositional function can become a proposition, which is what we've been working with, when, and have a truth value, of course, when their variables are replaced by a value from the domain or bound by a quantifier, which we'll talk about in the next video. So if I have P of X, then obviously that is a propositional function. It's not a proposition unless I then give you a value. So for example, if P of X denotes X is greater than zero, and then I say P of negative three, that's just like we would be used to saying negative three is greater than zero, which of course is false. P of zero would be zero is greater than zero, which of course is false. P of three would be three is greater than zero, which is true. Now it's very important that we understand what the domain is. And the domain called the universe, which is why we use u, so we're talking about the universe of, in this case, integers. So I'm throwing a lot of vocabulary at you, but that's what we're working with here. So we have propositional function that becomes a proposition when we replace the variable with some value from the domain. So let's take a look at an example here and I have a propositional function, r, x, y, z. r is the predicate, and that represents this relationship, x plus y equals z. x, y, z are the variables, and u, the universe, is the domain, and the domain for all three variables is going to be the integers in this case. So keep in mind, right now, this is considered a propositional function. Now that I've given x, y, and z each a value, this is now a proposition. Proposition has a truth value of true or false. So now I can find that truth value 
by replacing x with 2, y with negative 1, and z with 5. 2 plus negative 1 is 1. 1 does not equal 5, so this has a truth value of false. Looking at the next example, R347, again, X, Y, Z have each been given a value, so this turns from a propositional function into a proposition. That gives me 3 plus 4 equals 7, replacing X with 3, Y with 4, and Z with 7. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 equals 7 is true. So it does have a truth value, and in this case, that truth value is true. For the last example, R, x, 3, z is still considered a propositional function. This is not a proposition because remember, to go from a propositional function to a proposition means I have to give values to each variable, and we can see here that we have two variables that are not yet assigned, so it is still considered a propositional function. It's important to understand that everything that we've learned to this point about connectives and all of our propositional logic also carry over to predicate logic. So things just get a little bit more complicated because now instead of just P or Q, I have P of three or P of negative one. So instead of just some proposition or compound proposition, now I have a propositional function made from our predicate logic. A lot of terminology. Same idea though, so this is not complicated. P of three tells us that if P of X denotes X is greater than zero, then P of three means three is greater than zero, which is true. And then P of negative one would be negative one is greater than zero, which is false. And then I'm just using that connective, my or connective, true or false. Well, that solution is true. Again, I'm not going to go through the rest of those with you, but we're really just using those same connectives that we did before. I know I've said it about 100 times so far, so we'll make this 101. Expressions with variables are not propositions and don't have truth values until I give you a value for the variable. So I can either give you a value for the variable like I did here, or we can use a quantifier. So coming up next, we're going to learn all about quantifiers.